For what purpose are we here on earth? We are here on earth in order to know and to love God, to do good according to His will, and to go someday to heaven. To be a human being means to come from God and to go to God. Our origin goes back farther than our parents. We come from God, in whom all the happiness of heaven and earth is at home, and we are expected in His everlasting, infinite blessedness. Meanwhile, we live on this earth. Sometimes we feel that our Creator is near. Often, we feel nothing at all. So that we might find a way home, God sent us His Son, who freed us from sin, delivers us from all evil, and leads us unerringly into true life. He is the way, and the truth, and the life. Why did God create us? God created us out of free and selfish love. When a man loves, his heart overflows. He would like to share his joy with others. He gets this from his Creator. Although God is a mystery, we can still think about him in a human way and say, Out of the surplus of his love, he created us. He wanted to share his endless joy with us, who are creatures of his love. Why do we seek God? God has placed in our hearts a longing to seek and find Him. St. Augustine says, You have made us for yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. We call this longing for God. It is natural for man to seek God. All of our striving for truth and happiness is ultimately a search for one who supports us absolutely, satisfies us absolutely, and employs us absolutely in His service. A person is not complete to himself until he has found God. Anyone who seeks truth seeks God, whether or not he realizes it. Can we know the existence of God by our reason? Yes, human reason can know God with certainty. The world cannot have its origin and its destination within itself. In everything that exists, there is more than we see. In order, the beauty, the development of the world point beyond themselves toward God. Every man is receptive to what true, good, and beautiful he hears within himself, the voice of conscience, which urges him to what is good and warns him against what is evil. Anyone who follows this path reasonably finds God. Why do people deny that God exists if we can know him by reason? To know the invisible God is a great challenge for human mind. Many are scared of it. Another reason why some do not want to know God is because they would then have to change their life. Anyone who says that a question about God is meaningless because it cannot be answered, it's making things too easy for himself. Can we grasp God at all in concepts? Is it possible to speak about Him meaningfully? Although we men are limited and the infinite greatness of God never fits into infinite human concepts, we can nevertheless speak rightly about God. In order to express something about God, we use imperfect images and limited notions, and so, everything we say about God is subject to the reservation that our language is not equal to God's greatness. Therefore, we must constantly purify and improve our speech about God. Why did God have to show Himself in order for us to be able to know what He is like? God did not have to reveal Himself to us, but He did it out of love. Just as in human love, one can know something about the beloved person only if he opens his heart to us. So. Do we know something about God's inmost thoughts only because the eternal and mysterious God has opened Himself to us out of love? From creation on, through the patriarchs and the prophets down to the definitive revelation in His Son Jesus Christ, God has spoken again and again to mankind.
In Him, He has poured out His heart to us and made His inmost being visible for us. How does God reveal Himself in the Old Testament? God shows Himself in the Old Testament as God, who created the world out of love and remains faithful to man, even when they have fallen away from Him into sin. God makes it possible to experience Him in history. With Noah, He establishes a covenant to save all living things. He calls Abraham so as to make him the father of a multitude of nations and to bless all the families of the earth in him. The people Israel sprung from Abraham becomes his special possession. To Moses, he introduces himself by name. His mysterious name, YHWH, usually described Yahweh, means I am who I am. He frees Israel from slavery in Egypt, establishes a covenant with them in Sinai, and true Moses gives them the law. Again and again, God sends prophets to his people to call them to conversion into the renewal of the covenant. The prophets proclaim that God will establish a new and everlasting covenant, which will bring about a radical renewal and divinity redemption. This covenant will be open to all human beings. What does God show us about himself when he sends his son to us? God shows us in Jesus Christ the full depth of his merciful love. Through Jesus Christ, the invisible God becomes visible. He becomes a man like us. This shows us how far God's love goes. He bears our whole burden. He walks every path with us. He is there in our abandonment, sufferings, or fear of death. He is there when we can go no farther, so as to open up for us the door leading into life. With Jesus Christ, has everything been said? Or does revelation continue even after Him? In Jesus Christ, God Himself came to earth. He is God's last word. By listening to Him, all men of all times can know who God is and what is necessary for their salvation. With the gospel of Jesus Christ, the revelation of God is perfect and complete. To make it comprehensible to us, the Holy Spirit leads us ever deeper into the truth. God's light breaks so forcefully into the lives of many individuals that they see the heavens opened. That is how the great places of pilgrimage such as Guadalupe in Mexico or Lourdes in France came about. The private revelations of visionaries cannot improve the gospel of Jesus Christ. No one is obliged to believe in them, but they can help us understand the gospel better. Their authenticity is tested by the church. Why do we hang on the faith? We hang on the faith because Jesus commands us, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. No genuine Christian leaves the transmission of the faith exclusively to specialists, teachers, pastors, missionaries. We are Christ for others. This means that every genuine Christian would like God to come to other people too. He says to himself, The Lord needs me. I have been baptized and confirmed and am responsible for helping the people around me to learn about God and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Mother Teresa used a good comparison. Often you can see power lines running alongside the street. Unless current is flowing through them, there is no light. The power line is you and I. The current is God. We have the power to allow the current to flow through us and thus to generate the light of the world. Jesus, or to refuse to be used and thus allow the darkness to spread.